Okay, everybody, are you ready for something pretty, pretty spectacular? This is Malou, sailing somewhere on the seven seas. And this is me, her captain, trying to steer her out into the unknown to be able to find that one very special spot. Consider subscribing and welcome on board. Good morning, Miss Fjord. It's low tide at the moment. You can see on the docks here, they're really, really high. It's like lying in this hole, kind of. So it feels like there could be, it could be like a storm raging just outside here, but you wouldn't even notice in this little protected hole when it's low tide. Then when we go up like two or three meters up again, then we will notice the wind, I guess. It's really nice and it's clearing up now, so I'm gonna head out on the bike. This little fjord where Nusfjord is uh, located, it's just, it feels like time's been standing still here a little bit, like nothing has happened for the last hundred years or so. And I don't know, just very, very picturesque and just small, like not these super high mountains or any like dramatic stuff or so, but just really cozy, really small, really nice. There we got some kind of really old barge or boat or anything like that as well. Rainbow! Yay! So there gotta be a treasure there or over there. It's pretty close though. I made it to my goal, Flagstad, Flagstad Beach and Flagstad Surf Camp. It wasn't supposed to rain so much today according to the weather report, but it's been just pouring down and, and just raining all the way, the whole bike ride to here. So I am completely, completely wet right now. I don't think there's going to be any surfing for me today, unfortunately. Would be nice to go into the beach bar though, but it's open at three, so that's still a couple of hours away. I'm, I'm just probably gonna walk around a little bit, check out the, the surf. Seems like there's a few people surfing over there. Let's see if I can find some little bit warmer shelter to dry up a little bit because I am completely, completely soaked. So there's two well-known surf spots in Lofoten. It's this place right here, Flokstad, which has a little bit more like beginner's place. It could be really big waves here as well. It's a little bit more beginner friendly and if you head a little bit northeast from here you're coming to Unstad which is probably the most popular most famous one I guess which has a little bit bigger waves for more experienced people but for me this will probably be the best beach to go back to Nussfjord and when I come back I have such a nice thing to look forward to I think this I think you guys will be a little bit jealous about this thing it seems pretty amazing so really looking forward to that now let's biking watch out for the chips <laughs> I didn't see any chips I only see High mountains and pretty massive streams. I actually saw this thing yesterday when I was walking around a little bit in the rain in the evening. And there's actually a spa right up here, like just all made of wood with these wooden jacuzzis on the outside and sauna and everything. And I thought it was just for the people staying in the huts here. But I talked to the guys in this place and they said that I, if I stay in the marina, I can actually go there and exit it for free as well. So I brought some beer and I'm heading in. I don't know if you can really see me now, 
the light is really low but I'm sitting here having a beer in the hot tub been talking to a couple from Ireland it's been here for a few days hiking around they give me some tips about where to go in this area so that was nice really nice guys and uh, just got this view view on the inlet of the fjord and it's really warm water here got a tub here as well and then this whole deck right here is just handmade by some kind of architect school or something like that a few students came here a couple of years ago and built all of this it's really cool actually cheers guys finally out on a proper hike again my right, right leg is feeling a lot better and as you can see the weather has cleared up a lot so i'm heading up towards that peak i think might be this one this one looks a little bit more spectacular but i think it's this one it's supposed to be about 800 meters over sea level so that's a good good little day hike i think there are these really big boulders here everywhere along the way up it's quite rugged and flat and then suddenly these big big boulders come around i guess it's from the ice age or something like that brought them into here but it looks a little bit funny when just there's more just this flat nothing and then all of a sudden in the middle of the flatness there's a few huge boulders okay everybody are you ready for something Pretty, pretty spectacular. I'm at right now it's called the Tönsås Heia and as you can see it overlooks the valley that goes down all the way to Nusfjord and you got this top over there as well which is covered in clouds at the moment slightly higher but I guess the the view is more or less the same a 360 view you could see more or less the peak of Lofoten very in the distance as well and in the other direction you can see more or less everything going all the way into the mainland more or less starting to get a little bit cloudy now so visibility is getting worse i'm gonna start heading down but this is pretty nice let's just stand here for a bit and appreciate this view i'm actually pretty scared of heights but naturally i gotta go down in this crack right here this is quite scary and quite slippery too to be honest just look at this crack right here what i think i can fly the drone here uh, making it towards the light again <laughs> Wow. <laughs> right there is a soaring eagle. I haven't really seen which which one it is at the moment. It's a bald eagle or anything smaller. I took a little detour off of the beaten path where I was going before and I came to to this gem right here which is leading down to the lakes this trail that i'm heading down right now it's definitely one of the most spectacular ones that i ever hiked for sure but it's it's pretty hard though it's pretty steep and slippery as well especially now in the autumn when everything is wet so going on this trail you gotta be in okay 
stamina like form kind of to to do it safely because I've been pretty close to slipping a couple of times but it's it's definitely worth it though like the surroundings here are I don't know I can't even describe it with words I guess I am striking gold here on this trail these mushrooms right here are like the most tasty mushrooms there is that I know about at least it's these white pretty big ones so good to just fry them and or have them in a sauce with pasta or anything like that and i found more here so i think that's gonna be the dinner mushrooms have been fried they're ending up on this fried bread as well sun is slowly slowly setting over there and i am gonna go go <laughs> wow. Wow. Now I'm in the little Smith's hut here, which used to be a place where people live, but then eventually as things got a little bit like growing and stuff like that, people were starting to use new materials and everything. The Smith got more and more important, so they built this and uh, the Smith was just making things for all the fishermen and everyone else in this village because there was quite a few people living there. This uh, beautiful little place on this fjord has been a fishing village for quite some time actually. In the end of the 1800s it was flowering a lot so they had like hundreds of small boats in this tiny harbor which is pretty hard to understand and then there was just thousands of people living, uh, close to 2,000 people lived here and there was way more buildings of course at that time but just a lot of people living off the fishing and in this small community. So this whole harbor basin here was completely covered with small rowing boats and a little bit bigger boats as well but just mainly rowing boats all the way across here all the way into the bay basically and all the way out here. This place is the cod liver factory kind of. This is where they got all the cod livers in and extracted all the oils and everything that you can possibly use from that. It's called Trondampery in Norwegian. And in here it's like a cinema where you can watch a movie about the whole history of Nusfjord and the fishing. And here you have the spa during daylight. So the hot tubs right here and then the sauna is covered in right here. There is probably a lot more things that you can experience and do here around and in Nusfjord. But right now the wind is calling us. It's time to prepare to keep heading north towards an island called Henningsver. Bye bye Nusfjord. Bye bye seagulls. <laughs> See you next year perhaps. I'm just trying to dodge this rain weather right now. Wow, that's really cool. Look, I don't know if you can see it, but there's actually snow on the tops right now. That looks so good. Ow! Just imagine that I was up there like 24 hours ago. Blazing sun, beautiful weather, like, I don't know, like 7 degrees in the air or something. And now, 24 hours later, there's snow on the top. So I'm not dodging rain weather, I'm actually dodging winter itself, you could say. Had some pretty good winter coming out from a fjord for a bit, but now these mountains right here is sheltering from the wind. Just basically had to turn on the engine to be able to do any speed at all forward. But motor sailing, so can go on low revs and still do pretty good speed. It's a really beautiful day, really nice. You got still a lot of tops around here with uh, snow on top of them. And uh, I'm starting to see our destination as well. It's not this next peak coming out here, but the next one after that. Suddenly we got a lot of wind and some rain coming in. Quite refreshing. It's very special to 
stay like this when the wind is coming from Lofoten. Just high mountains everywhere that's sheltering from the wind. So there's never really any even wind at all, to be honest. And when you're passing like long peaks going out or peninsulas kind of, then you're getting completely sheltered. So I think I've been just stopping and starting the engine maybe like three times or something on this sail. And uh, it's only a 20 mile sail, so it's not much at all. But the last bit now, I'm quite a bit from land, so I'm getting pretty good wind, pretty sustaining winds. So hopefully I can sail the rest of the way and uh, hopefully get there before this guy sets for the day. One really cool thing now when you're getting just further in on the Lofoten is that you're getting closer to the mainland as well. So now I can see the mainland really clearly actually and more or less the end of this kind of huge fjord that is between the mainland and Lofoten. There seems to be a few different kind of guest docks here in Henningsvær. I've seen a couple of small ones up there. Seems like they belong to restaurants or something like that. Now I'm just heading as far as I can go basically into this bay. Let's see if there's any good little dock where I could go. Okay, that is pretty good. Although when I came in, I came in perfectly here to the dock. But then I just, when I was gonna put in the back gear to just break the boat, uh, I was just going forward. I don't know what happened. It's just, I thought I was going backward, but I was basically just going throttle forward. So I got a little, a little bit of a scrape on the, the dock right there. It was only on the wood, so. Doesn't, doesn't really matter too much, but oh, I guess I'm pretty tired. Gotta get something to eat.